Well, as I am Brazilian, the introduction is a first kick of the soccer game. Well, I'm not going to tell things that you guys already know, so threats have changed. Now we have advanced attacks. Uh, I'm not talking on only about APTs, but uh, I'm talking about things have changed. Uh, the last time I was here in this event, about, I don't know, two or three years ago, uh, we were talking about uh, APTs, about nations attack attacking nations and things like this. Uh, and this is okay, but now the threat have changed because uh, money is involved. Now the attackers want to make money. They discovered how to make money, and that's what I'll talk about here. And, of course, they also discovered that uh, SCADA and ICS are an easy target. So, well, all things that you guys know, migration to IP protocol, larger connectivity, uh, low cybersecurity maturity, uncommon operating system patches, and uh, the sophistication of specific attacks that now we have thousands of them. This is a research that uh, we do every year, uh, only in Brazil, okay? Uh, so what we do here, we just summarize the in incidents that we have inside our customers. Uh, our customers are main uh, power companies and um, less uh, water and then waste, uh, steel, mining companies, but all critical infrastructures. And the, the thing that's to be shown is that uh, last year, uh, last year, no, two years ago, because we are in 2017 now, we had uh, 667 incidents. It's much more than three times all the years passed. So this is a huge shift there. And uh, finally, companies in my country are waking up for the risk because now it's feasible, now it's happening, it's happening everywhere. So uh, in that, in that, uh, summar in that summarize, uh, I had uh, data of all kinds of malware, but now we are going to talk about uh, ransomware in SCADA, and ransomware is new for SCADA, so things can become worse because the attackers have figured out that ICS are an easy target and started to attack them. Okay, about ransomware. I believe everybody here knows that ransomware is a type of malware that prevents the user from accessing your data. Uh, the user will recover the data if he pays a ransom, okay? And uh, it affects direct, uh, directly the availability of ICS by blocking access to vital information for its operation. Ransomware is not new. Ransomware exists since uh, 1989, so it has uh, almost 30 years of existence. The new thing is that now we are finding ransomware in critical infrastructures, inside plants. This is new. So this is something that I got from the internet uh, last year. Uh, telling that ransomware will wreck a vac on critical infrastructure. That was March of 2016, so almost one year ago. And, uh, well, I used this slide in a presentation there in Brazil by March, and then nobody knew what ransomware was. And then I spoke again with this slide in a presentation on November in another event in Brazil, and everybody knew what ransomware was about because we had lots of attacks there. I'm going to show you two attacks here, but this is common. This is something that we see all the time. We see, m of course, mainly in corporate and uh, IT networks, but we see lots in OT networks too. It's not new, it's not something, uh, it's not trivial too, but it's not new. Uh, one case that you guys may know, it's the f it was the first I saw the electricity board 
of Israel crippled by ransom cyber attack, causing widespread panic. And that happened last week here in, in Vermont, uh, a ransomware attack. Okay, the thing is that this ransomware attack was charging for a ransom of 1,000 bitcoins. It's a lot of money. 1,000 bitcoins about, uh, as you can see here, uh, $900,000. So it's a lot of money. And this is the shift, because they discovered that they, uh, the cyber attackers discovered that they can earn lots of money inserting ransomware inside uh, plants and stopping them or causing any kind of disruption. And this is serious. Uh, if you compare ransomware in OT against ransomware in IT, you can see that it's clear, it's clear that ransomware in I OT is much worse than ransomware in IT because it blocks access to HMIs, it can cipher Windows SCADA supervision and programming machines, it can cipher historians and production databases, uh, engineering stations, it can spread to other plants through remote access or VPNs, it can block access to utility systems, all those risks are very common. Uh, and, well, what can I do? How can I uh, be sure that uh, uh, people in other country making a remote access to my plant has a, a machine free of ransomware? It's very hard to do. So, let me talk about two ransomware cases, two study cases that uh, uh, happened at in Brazil. The first one is a furniture factory. So uh, it happened in the state of Goiás in, in Brazil. It's in the middle of Brazil, next to our capital. Uh, it was a crypto RSA 496 ransomware, and it infected some uh, SCADA supervision and programming machines inside the factory. This is currently the screen of one of the machines. Uh, the consequence, the factory stopped working. The company lost customer and supplier registrations, employee payroll, and machine supervision programming. They, is, they asked for three, uh, $3,061. I don't know why 61, but uh, that's the, the information. Uh, but the financial loss was big because the factory stayed 15 days stopped and lost about $100,000 due to downtime in production and delays in deliveries until to restructure to return to normal routines. Uh, no ransom was paid for infected machines that had to be fully recovered because the OT team didn't have healthy and updated backups. Uh, okay, so I have a little video to show you. Um, this passed in a TV show in Brazil on a Sunday night. Uh, it's very interesting, man. So, essa fábrica em Goiânia produz móveis sob medida. Aqui, o ataque foi na segunda-feira, dia 31 de agosto. Os arquivos dos computadores tinham sido substituídos por símbolos estranhos. Eles estavam totalmente danificados, totalmente criptografados, não se conseguia acesso aos arquivos. Ficou em torno de 15 dias parado, até se reestruturar para se começar a voltar às rotinas normais. Com o sequestro de arquivos e bancos de dados, essa fábrica de móveis parou de funcionar. A empresa perdeu cadastros de clientes e fornecedores, a folha de pagamento dos funcionários e a programação das máquinas. Como atender novos pedidos? Tudo estava interligado. A gestão dos projetos, a fabricação das encomendas e até a embalagem. A gente buscou várias empresas de recuperação de dados, pessoas especialistas nisso e infelizmente não tivemos sucesso. Hoje não é mais possível quebrar ou descobrir a senha usada para cifrar esses arquivos. Well, this video is larger than this and I cut it just in the to show you what uh, is really interesting. Uh, what happens with this small factory? It's just an example what 
what can happen with larger uh, plants, because uh, the ransomware uh, is still a dumb piece of software. It searches for databases, it searches for email servers, it searches for web servers, but it doesn't know what uh, he's ciphering. So, for example, it can cipher a, a, PI, a PI database. And how about the consequences? Uh, he can cipher lots of uh, supervision stations or even a SCADA server. And how about the consequences? Uh, I have another study case here, and it's an electrical company uh, in Brazil. Uh, it's a global company that operates there. And uh, this case, uh, we work it together with the Palo Alto team in Brazil, uh, because it was a very bad situation that they faced. Okay, and this, uh, this electrical company is located in the south of Brazil, and uh, it was infected by CryptoLocker. Uh, the machines infected were some Windows SCADA supervision machines inside a control center. Uh, this is not the screen that, uh, that they had there, but this is the CryptoLocker screen. Note that they give some time to pay the ransom there, and uh, of course if you don't pay, so they won't give you the piece of software to recover your files. Uh, even if you pay, they can give you the piece of software to recover, or they can't, and they even can give you a bugged piece of software. So uh, yesterday I was reading something about uh, Docsware, that it's the evolution of ransomware. That is when the guys not only uh, take the, the f uh, cipher the files, but they take the contents of the files, and then they can sell this for the con the for other companies, they can make lots of things with this. So uh, the infection vector was a, a pen drive. Pen drive is a Brazilian thing. So here is flash drive used at one HMI. Uh, the ransomware is spread through file, sh file shares and network mapped folders, infecting other three supervision stations at the same automation network segment. The consequence was the momentary loss of supervision and control of power distribution. They requested $300 per machine, so it's pretty cheap, okay? Uh, what shows that uh, this infection was not a, uh, how can I say, an intended infection. It was something that just happened, a normal ransomware. There was no financial loss because the control was automatically transferred to a secondary control center that wasn't physically connected to the main control center. No ransom was paid for infected machines that could be reset through healthy backups. This company was prepared. They had another control center and they just switched the operations to the other control center while they cleaned the center that was infected. But I can tell you that this company is, I don't know, 10% of the companies in Brazil, of the electrical companies, energy companies in Brazil, because they are prepared, they have another control center, they have lots of virtualized machines there, they test this and they simply switch it so nothing worse happened. And what if the worst happens? And uh, how to face this? Because it's a huge problem. Sometimes uh, a company is not, sometimes, no, most, most of the times, the company is not prepared for ransomware infections. So when mitigation fails, it's important for organization, or organizations and individuals to consider all possible responses to a ransomware attack. So the first thing, have a prepared incident response team. Uh, well, I don't know of any company in my country that have an incident response team ready for ransomware. Uh, when this kind of situation happens, it's crazy. They simply don't know what to do, and it's a very bad surprise to see that screen charging for money. 
and um, sometimes they even don't know how to pay the ransom because they don't know bitcoins, they don't know dark web, they don't know how to assess this, and they don't know how to do anything. So this is a problem. Uh, so this team, this incident response team, must have previously planned a procedure to follow in the event of a ransom attack during its risk assessment. This procedure should start notifying the authorities and regulators because ransom attacks are crimes prescribed by law. Okay, you know, we have there in Brazil uh, two of the 10 top uh, cyber criminals group worldwide, and they are fully prepared to prepare a ransomware attack. But why are they so good, so technically good? No, they are not. To perform a ransomware attack is nothing, not complicated. It's easy. You just have to download the software. You have lots of them. It, the download, change the key, and then you customize your ransom. It's easy. And it's not so complicated to insert a ransomware inside, for example, a, a hydropower uh, company in Brazil. Why? Because we have uh, about 85% of our energy coming from hydropower. And those hydropowers are located in very, very remote locations, in the middle of nowhere. And people hire, people, uh, hire persons that live on those locations that, of course, are not so well prepared as people in, the, in Rio, in Sao Paulo, in Brasilia, in the major cities of Brazil. So, in the other, and also, those guys didn't earn too much money to operate those things. So, they are easy to talk and then offer them money to just, oh, insert this flash drive and double click here and I'll give you $10,000. It's not so complicated to find thing, people to do this. Uh, and security policies, when they exist, they are most for. IT networks that are uh, applied to OT networks, and of course they don't work. So this is bad. So the, the second thing that you can do is switch control to a secondary control center, as the energy company did. This is the best thing to do. But uh, as I told, this company is 10%. 90% don't have a secondary control center ready to switch things. So they have to face the attack and do something. Uh, try to recover lost data. System backup and recovery are the only technical solution to reverse ransom attacks. OK, great. Uh, modern ransomware uh, is able to find storages in the network, so they can cipher the backups too. They search for storages, and they cipher storages. So if the guy makes backups on storages, probably he lost the backup too. On the other hand, if, he, if uh, the company makes backups on tapes and things like this, so most of the time, nobody restores the backup to see if it works, and then Murphy's Law uh, does his work. Uh, try to recover, oh, I do, do nothing. Sometimes the machines that people lost are not so important, so they can simply format it and restore it from scratch, and that's all. Pay the redemption, pay the ransom. So this is what people can do. But there is a problem. If you pay the ransom, you have two things can happen. Uh, first thing, the attackers can ignore that you pay the ransom and do nothing. The second thing, they can give you the piece of software to restore your systems. It can work or not, or it can be bugged. I saw both things happening. That is another thing. Uh, some, uh, some managers, some uh, automation managers, hide those things. So they try to pay the ransom very quickly and restore things because uh, they don't want, don't want people to know that their backups are not working, or even that they don't have backups and things like this. But uh, this is not good, because uh, uh, when you pay the ransom, so now the attacker knows that uh, you can pay more, you can pay other times, and you are vulnerable, 
and uh, maybe he will try to attack you more and more. What most of the companies do is a hybrid solution that is to try to recover data in the ways they can, and if it doesn't work, then pay the ransom. But there is an important detail. Modern ransomware is able to search servers and backup applications running on networks and also encrypt them. In this case, the only possible solution will be to pay the ransom. Paying re redemptions can be easy for private institutions, but public companies, government companies in Brazil, they cannot simply pay things. They must bid things. They must make reverse auctions to buy things. And this is a process that takes months. So how to do in something that uh, you got to pay now? There's no way. This is a huge problem. There are some cyber uh, insurance companies in Brazil, like Marsh, that are already offering insurances for companies for malware. So companies buy insurances to have money to pay ransoms if they occur. So this is something that, uh, I don't know, three years ago was unthinkable. And now it's happening. And uh, the other thing now that I can say is that from this year, the next year, the other year, ransomware will grow up, will be more and more sophisticated. And if we don't do anything now to protect our networks, to make a, a very nice, a very good defense in depth model inside them, then some companies will face very, very trouble on this. <laughs>